Hey guys, and welcome to Code with Chuck. Today I'm gonna to help you make this mini map feature in the bottom right. We're gonna have some coordinates around it. It's gonna move an indicator with our direction, and we're gonna use a mask to give it rounded edges. I've included the files for free in the description. If you wanna download those, we'll be able to go ahead and get started. First, you're gonna import them into your project. Then from there, we're gonna right click, go to user interface and create a new widget blueprint. Let's call this one player HUD underscore widget. All right, we'll go ahead and open that up. And first we'll use a canvas across the whole widget. And then we're gonna get an image. We're gonna set the size of the image to 300 by 300 to match the assets that I provided. We're gonna anchor it to the bottom right and set the position X and position Y each to negative 330. This leaves a little bit of space on the right and bottom edge of the screen. We're gonna do this two more times, creating two more images in the exact same location, making sure their sizes are 300 by 300 and that they're in the negative 330 by negative 330 position. Let's rename this top layer to compass, compass overlay. And then the next layer, we can do direction indicator. And then the image furthest back, we're gonna call this mini map. This is where we're actually gonna display the map. If we start by opening the brush settings of the compass overlay, we can then set the image to our compass overlay texture. After that, we can select the directional indicator, select the brush setting, and do the same with our direction indicator asset. If we change the tint to the minimap image, we can see the coordinates and the directional indicator appear. If we go back to content and third person, we can go into our BP third person character that Unreal Engine provided us with. We're gonna add a spring arm and attached to the spring arm, we're gonna add a scene component capture 2D. We select the spring arm, we can rotate it 90 degrees in the air, basically making it so that the camera is directly over the player facing the ground. This is where our mini map image is coming from. I made the spring arm a little bit longer and this will change how zoomed in your map is. With the camera still selected, we're gonna scroll down to target texture. When we go to select one, we hit render texture to create a new one, give it a file name, and a file location. This render target texture is a texture that is constantly updated with the camera's image. Next, we'll right click on the mini map render target we created and create a material from it. We can select the output node of the material and change the material domain to user interface. Connect up our RGB to the output color. And for me, I wanted to add a little bit of a blue tint to my mini map. So I'm gonna add a vector parameter and call it color. And you can select whatever color tint you'd like if you want. And then we're gonna multiply this by the RGB of the texture sample and plug that into our final color. You can see in the display, it gave our mini map a tint. The other thing we can do is change our blend mode to translucent and add a scalar parameter to the opacity. 
By doing this, we make our mini mat somewhat translucent. If we return back to the player HUD widget, we go to our mini map and we can set the image to this material that we've created. Now we can see the mini map. We can also change the tint back to normal since we set the tint in the material. Now we need to make it so the widget actually appears when we begin playing the game. After the begin play node, we're going to add a create new widget node and select our player HUD. Now let's drag off owning player and we can get player controller. After this, we're going to drag off the return value and do an add to viewport node, which actually displays it on the screen. Now, if we hit play and run around, we can see our mini map moving. And this may be exactly what some people want. I was looking for my mini map to stay still and my player to move in the middle. But if not, you could leave it like this and probably just remove the cardinal directions. But in order for the map to stay in the same orientation, we need to select our spring arm again and search for inherit. And we need to disable all the camera settings under inherit. This makes it so the camera doesn't rotate with the player character. All right, so now that we got our map to stay in the same orientation, we need our pointer in the middle to turn to show the direction that the character is facing. So we're gonna to go to the tick event of our widget. We're gonna get the player character and we're gonna get its rotation. Now we're gonna bring in a reference to our directional indicator and we're gonna search angle and set render transform angle. So each tick, let's set the render transform angle. We'll break apart the world position on the player and use the Z position and plug it into the render transform angle. So now it looks like our indicator in the middle is rotating, but it looks to be about 90 degrees off. So we'll go back and adjust for that. Off of the Z value, we can add 90 and then plug that into our angle. Go ahead and hit play to test and our indicator is facing the correct direction now. Some people may want to stop here, but I also wanted to add a mask to show you how to shape your mini map in a custom way. To do that, you're going to take the mask texture and create a material from it. Once you have that, click on the output of the material and change it to user interface again. And we also want to change the blend mode to translucent. We want to get a 2D texture node and we want to name this texture. We'll select our mask for the texture of this node. Take the RGB of the 2D texture and plug it into the final color. Take the alpha into a multiply node. On the second texture, we're going to take the RGB and multiply by the alpha and plug that into our original multiply node. Now we'll go back to our player HUD, select mini map, right click it and hit wrap with, and then select retainer box. We're going to make sure we select the retainer box and change the material to our mask material that we just created. It changed the shape of the box a little by masking off the corners. You could have a round mini map or whatever you choose based on the type of mask that you provide. As always, thanks for joining and I can't wait to see you next time.